It's your parole officer. What? It's your parole officer. Hi. Hey. I have a surprise drug test today for you. The drug test? <laughs> yes. I don't want to do that today. You need to. <laughs> do I have a choice? No, you have to today. You can find anything on the internet these days, and one website in particular is causing outrage among Winnipeg's Aboriginal community tonight. CTV's Jillian Taylor joins us now from the newsroom to explain. Jillian, what's on this website that's causing so much controversy? It's a pornographic website that features only Native women, and some are from Winnipeg. We're not naming the website, but members of Winnipeg's Aboriginal community are outraged because they believe these women are vulnerable. In Winnipeg, Aboriginal women are among the largest of the exploited population. And now, a pornographic website featuring only Native women is causing a lot of controversy. I have a lot of disrespect for that individual, and, um, you know, the community is outraged. Lisa Michelle says the site further stereotypes of Aboriginal women. The website advertises casino girls, reservation hotties, and welfare chicks. The site creator says it's a niche website and the girls are willing. If they didn't want to do the videos or whatever, they wouldn't accept the money, the way I look at it. On his website, Florida resident Shim McBeb says he came to Winnipeg's North End, which he calls the ethnic part of town, where all the natives and brown folks are. He walked the North End looking for referrals and paid young women to have sex with him, which he filmed for the website. I met her the first day or whatever, and I told her what I do, and I was like, look, if you know anyone who's interested in shooting a video with me, I'll pay him a couple hundred bucks, whatever, for this, and um, let me know. He says the girls are over 18 and signed consent forms. Michelle says she has her doubts, and she feels he targeted girls with addictions who wouldn't know what they were signing. They may or may not even recall you know, what has happened, and that's, that's a sad part. We contacted the Winnipeg police about the website, but they say they have not received any uh, complaints yet about it, and uh, they said that if the women were under the influence at the time of the filming, that would be very concerning to them. Now, Jillian, I understand there are also girls on this website from other provinces. Yes, he did take trips into Canada before he came to Winnipeg, and he went to Ontario. There's one girl from Thunder Bay featured, and she is very, very pregnant, and she's smoking a cigarette. There's another woman from there, and I spoke to her, a family friend of hers, and he said that she was completely under the influence and actually has no memory of the incident whatsoever. And there is a group of women from Thunder Bay who are now hoping to take legal action. Thanks for this, Jillian. CTV's Jillian Taylor reporting tonight from the newsroom. Okay. This is going to be my last show for the day, and it's a really, really, really long email. But the guy wrote me from fucking Scotland, and it's like this long on my screen. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. It's six or seven paragraphs. I'm going to try to read this very fast. Um, maybe you should press the fast forward button on your thing so you hear me talking like blah, 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 so I play it fast. But I'm going to read it and reply to it. I'm going to read it in its entirety first, all right? This regarding, uh, this guy is a member, I assume, of Indian Girls, one of my websites. Look it up if you want, wink, wink. Okay, here it is. Dear Shimmy, that's me. I'm a white, if that's relevant, Canadian guy. Mid-40s who's lived in the UK, mostly Scotland, for the last 20 years. I stumbled across your website many years ago and thought it was novel, but only rediscovered it as of today and opened a subscription. I can say it's easy to envy you for the bits of your lifestyle that make it onto video, but it seems like you've become a victim, quote unquote, of your own success. So far, I've only caught a few brief blurbs through your videos of all this negative moral press you've gotten in Canada. Mm -hmm -hmm. As you're no doubt well aware, in the last few years, public consciousness of systemic racism, some of it really insidious, against natives, and native women in particular, has grown, along with great shame and soul searching. It's not unlike some sub-issues, quote unquote, within the Black Lives Matter movement, like when you discover that, in an American hospital, a black person, irrespective of class or wealth, 
is statistically less likely to get a positive health outcome than a white person who arrived presenting the same condition. Disgusting. <laughs> With the First Nations and Inuit, quote unquote Indians and quote unquote Eskimos to Americans. And, and again, in particular the women, there's plenty of injustice and dysfunction to go around. More historically, of course, but problems still persist, just out of view. I very much applaud the activism and consciousness raising towards mooted healing and future mending of ways. However, because your work is going on during the height of this movement, and you, let's face it, work in a moral, quote-unquote, gray area, it's all too easy for virtuous do-gooders to lump you in as a, quote-unquote, bad guy perpetuating the exploitation, quote unquote, of these young women. Prostitution too, which is included in the Venn diagram of what you do, inhabits that same moral gray zone. Some would say, including most of the girls I wager, that they chose to work in prostitution, though none would say it's a glamorous or long-term plan, even though it might earn them more than minimum wage. Moralists will argue they wouldn't have truly chosen prostitution. Oh, I would disagree. Some hoes just want to be hoes. Sorry. But if they didn't come from a situation of pick one, a broken home, drug or alcohol addiction, sexual abuse, chronic poverty, and unemployment, etc., you can keep following it backwards, saying those conditions wouldn't be so prevalent if it weren't for residential schools getting fucked over with treaties and so on. I say just because you're not jumping in to quote unquote fix the problem, it doesn't mean that you're a part of the problem. You seem to me like an unapologetic capitalist, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Like you're no Donald Trump, you're straight up and unambiguous about offering the girls a certain kind of work, spelled out verbally and in writing, probably paying them a bit better than their average clients would. If you hadn't crossed paths with any of these girls, they would be hustling for their usual, potentially riskier clientele. And if they've heard from other girls who have worked for you, or they've seen the videos, they'll know you have a reputation for doing straightforward business in a safe environment, which is not something they can rely upon with others. <laughs> if the videos reflect the quote unquote real you at all, and they do, I'd also say that you're a pretty affable and decent guy. I'm not sure what affable means. A-F-F-A-B-L-E. Maybe a Scotland word. The average girl seems pretty comfortable with you. And you could allow context into the porn. Oh, and you allow context into the porn you make. I'm not just talking about your sharing news of your PR troubles. <laughs> But you like that, huh, Kai? Kai's over there cracking up in the corner. You guys don't see him over there. He's in the corner. He's in the cut laughing at me while I do these shows. Oh, man, I fucked up the light. Yes, I did say affable. AF. Go Google that. See what happens. Friendly, good natured, or easy to talk to. Friendly, good natured, or easy to talk to. So, yeah, I'm affable. Girls think I'm affable. Probably think I'm a cartoon character most of the time. Anyway, where was I at on this guy's email? It's a long fucking email. I'm like halfway through with people, so like, yeah, okay. Affable. Fuck, where's that word at? I'd say you're pretty, a pretty affable and decent guy. The average girl seems pretty comfortable with you. And you allow context into the porn you make. I'm not just talking about your sharing of the news of your PR troubles, but if a girl has a story to tell, sometimes interesting or funny, you just let the camera roll. <laughs> you could cut a lot in post-production. I'm actually very lazy, really. It's just me that I don't like to edit videos too much. Just like I upload these shows pretty raw, like I don't put all subtitles and thumbnails and bullshit. I just shoot the video and I upload it. If the right people want to see it, they'll see it. And I don't really feel a need to fucking gloss it up and sugar the shit up or whatever. You know, if a motherfucker doesn't like the image of me in the thumbnail, don't click on me. Fuck it. You know what I'm saying? I I'm not going to trick, bait, and switch people and... You know what I'm saying? I don't care if only two motherfuckers watch this. Or I, I don't care if nobody watch it, actually. How about that? So, yeah, I don't like wasting time in editing. Sorry to cut you off. I'm reading, my, reading your thing here now. I get carried away sometimes. You, could let, you just let the camera roll. 
You could cut a lot in post-production, but I like it that you include much of it in your final cut videos. That's what I just said. It makes the girls relatable and humanizes them, which is a way of allowing them more dignity than many would offer them, especially those moral crusaders. One of these days, one or more of them is really going to come and get you through the courts. Oh, I've been through all that before a couple times. I've been writing this now over long letter because I am concerned this might happen. The most obvious way, of course, is to say that you coerced a particular girl into signing a contract when she was too high to take responsibility for herself. That's a subject to a lot of he said, she said, but it could blow up in your face with the wrong judge. I imagine this is something you've been very conscientious about for some time, and my caution to you is perhaps the hundredth time you've heard read it. Still, they could come at you quote-unquote laterally. No one could nail Al Capone through conventional means until the IRS had a go look at his crooked books. They might try a visa issue. If you come into Canada conventionally as a regular tourist visitor, are you allowed to conduct the sort of business that you do? Or do you technically require a specific business visa? Or it could be a tax thing. <laughs> No worries, sir. I'm actually a Canadian permanent resident and all that shit. So it's all good. It's all good. Uh, but thanks for the concern, though. Uh, again, for the specific thing... What the fuck? Again, for the specific sort of business you're doing, you're li are you liable to pay either federal and or provincial taxes on it? Yeah, I pay taxes. And do you need to report that to customs on either side of the border? Finally... Well, the last legal aspect I can think of is the sort of work you're doing compliant with the relevant labor laws. They spell labor with the, with the letter U here. I find that very strange. L-A-B-O-U-R. Labor laws. Since, that's probably a Scotland thing, I think. Since the girls aren't quote-unquote staff in the regular sense, this shouldn't be a big concern. But I warn you, not to fall afoul, afoul, of the la labor board, labor board. In Canada, the federal government provides free services to aggrieved, current, or past employees to pursue their employers for all manner of things, and they usually win or settle out of court. I just don't want to see your work get quashed for stupid reasons. I would definitely recommend you invest in a long, comprehensive talk with a Canadian lawyer about all these hypotheticals so you'll be ready for them moving forward. Speaking of forward thinking and quote-unquote disaster preparedness, as I scroll down, last paragraph, people, this is a long video, sorry, I can think of one other thing you should invest in, PR insurance like public relations insurance? I didn't know such a thing. White people love insurance. <laughs> it's all kind of insurance this, insurance that. I don't like insurance, man. Okay, if, if some people are trying to paint you as a villain type character, counter that by showing you have a sense of human compassion. Take, say, 10% of your net profit every month, <laughs> regardless of whether you're that's the tithe man god damn 10 percent that's more than the lord asked for 10 percent regardless of shit <laughs> okay regardless of whether you're working in canada that month or not and donate it to a relevant charity make it to a charity that's active where you do most of your work Winnipeg maybe <laughs> and involved with the welfare of natives, women, or native women. I do a lot of charity for native women right here in Thunder Bay. You guys just don't realize it. You don't realize it. All the fucking free food. My fucking girl, they, I need a ride here. I need a ride there. You want a free Poke Bowl? You need to borrow five, ten, fifteen, twenty dollars? God damn. You don't know how many handouts, how many free coffees, how much free shit. I give to these people that I don't even know that come my way. A lot of times they're just cold and want to warm up. They don't have any fucking where to go. It's crazy. But yeah, I do my charity. I, it, 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 believe me, my time, the time that I donate just from my day to charity for Native women every day here in Thunder Bay, Ontario, is more than 10% than I earn here. By far. Fuck. Anyway, I do what I can for people within reason.
So anyway, yeah, a skills retraining oriented charity. Man, you're assuming that they want to work. <laughs> Quote, I know you're in Scotland, but it might surprise you, but Native American women here, most of them don't want to work. Very few of them work. Very few of them. Prove me wrong. All right. Um, where was he? Where is he at on here? Skills-oriented charity to get out of prostitution and into regular work, as I was just saying, would be good. But a women's shelter, something your girls might even use. Why do you refer to them as my girls? I don't own them, man. They're just... They come into the fucking store here. I don't know where the fuck they came from. I don't know their history, how they got here. A lot of times they just heard their friend. Got another order here. Hold on. Oh, fuck, man. We don't have any of that in stock. They ordered the sushi box shit. Uh, here, hold on a minute. Hold on, people. Here, fix oh, Jesus, fuck. Here, fix this so that that's uh, out of stock or whatever it is. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't restock on the sushi for that shit. Yeah. Anyway, where was I at here? Uh, where was he? Something about charity and some shit. Yeah, women's shelter would be, but donate to a women's shelter. Wow. Whew. Mention this in future interviews. Mention it on the website. Mention it to every girl. I shouldn't be laughing at what you're saying. It's actually a very good idea, but I do I do things on a more of a grassroots level, actually, you know? So like I, I like to actually see the people that I'm helping directly, even though I don't actually talk about them or be like, look, I'm helping this person here. I'm not like the fucking people on the commercial that has to go stand next to the African kids and go like, because I did something for them and I bought them a case of water. You know, I'm not that vain. I, like, you help people, you should help them because you want to help them. And you shouldn't have to tell people, like, look, this is what I did for them. You know what I'm saying? People from the streets know who I am, etc. That's all that matters, okay? You people on the internet, I don't care if you know who I help or not. It's, it's irrelevant. Help is for the people who need help. It's not for display. It's not for advertisement or promotion. I'm not saying, like, oh, let me go do something for the women's shelter because maybe I'll get some more sales and subscriptions, <laughs> you know? I don't, it doesn't work like that. I want to see the people I'm helping directly. And plus, I used to fundraise for a lot of charities here in town. For a lot of you guys that don't know, I was a telemarketer here in Thunder Bay for like two years, like about 10 years ago. And all we did was call up and down for all these charities that were scam organizations. Most of them are. Like most of them, like the top 20 charities. It's like, yeah, they don't actually help the people. Probably like 80% of the money goes directly back to the call center. Only 20% of the money you send goes to the fucking cause of, you know, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, Save the African Child Soldiers, and all this crazy-ass scripts they'd have us read. So I know for a fact it's not your, your time and money is better well spent directly helping the motherfucker, literally hand-to-hand -to, -hand to help them if you really feel like helping them to do something or whatever. And helping isn't always about money. It could be about your time, your this, your advice, your fucking whatever. It's, money's not the only metric you could help people in. Some people just need a fucking somebody to listen to them, actually. Maybe they just need some direction, and that doesn't cost any fucking thing. You know what I'm saying? You can, people, you, you motherfuckers can email me for free. Etc. as you have done so you know I might take a while to get back to you but whatever sorry this took a while but I want to do all this okay something something women's shelter the fuck's that That's, that, that didn't sound very good that must mean like he rejected the order or he's not happy or something oh well that wasn't a very happy sound sounded like the game over sounds shit oh well you know what I'm saying I can't save the world I can't help everybody Somebody's gonna have to wait for that sushi. It's too cold for me to go to the store and get that shit today. Shit, nigga. Minus 2026. 20, You're gonna have to wait for that sushi sampler box. It's out of stock, okay? I'm chilling here in the pokey pokey. It's 82 degrees. Like a motherfucker. <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay, let me get through this email here. <laughs> Let's tell you this is gonna take a long time. Need a joint soon. Okay, women's shelter. Mention this in future interviews. Mention it on the website. Mention it to every girl who works for you, and it will build goodwill. Even if the do-gooder moralists chafe at the thought. Wow. Also, check with your lawyer or accountant as to if you do have to pay Canadian taxes, whether your donations might partly cancel out the taxes you owe. It is an investment, but I think you can only win with it. I've been typing far too long already, so I'll free you from reading all my blethering. 
I have so many new words I've learned here. Could you look that up, please, Kai? Blethering. B L E T H E R I N G. Talk in a long-winded way without making very much sense. Talk in a long-winded way without making very much sense. That's the word blethering, vocabulary word for the day. Okay, good to know. Keep doing good work. Thank you, sir. Please write back to tell me what you think of my ideas and if you have already tried some of these long before they popped into my mind in capital letters. Take care and I look forward to your reply. Best regards, Derek Aubrey, Edinburgh, Scotland, UK. First of all, I got to do something on the screen here. Let me put this mic down. Shit. You'd be surprised, but a lot of people actually, um, like, fucking want to, like, uh, what do they call that word? Prank or, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like prank email you and shit. I always, I, I go through the extra length of looking through email headers, especially when I get interesting emails. Like this motherfucker says he's in Scotland. I need to verify that. So I always go into the headers. You know, I'll be thinking motherfucking the feds be talking to me. Some fucking Dorian ass, a, Dorian A. Peters, motherfucking Uncle Tom, sellout motherfucker type of people. They like to write me and fuck with me like this. So I like to make sure the emails originate from where the fuck they're supposed to be coming from. So if you ever email me for the first time anonymous, and it feels like you're all up in my shit or you know too much about me before I even hit reply I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna double trace that IP back and see where the fuck you coming from that's all I'm just checking you out homie so it's all good but I appreciate your time in the email okay got a dot UK got a yahoo dot UK email address but we're gonna go fucking uh, go to the headers fuck that how do you do headers do 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 I want to see the full headers I like to look under the hood. Show original. I'll be looking at the X mailer, SMTP, simple mail transfer protocol, because I'm an X spammer. Okay, looking through the headers so far. Going back, bounced it off of Outlook, X exchange, mime type. Let us see here. Everything seems to check out so far. All right. CP. I can check that IP in a second, but so far everything everything on the SMTP looks like it's on the up and up. So this man really is from the UK. My apologies, brother, but I do have to vet everybody because I have lots. I do, as you as you know in your email, you, as you say myself, yeah, this and this and this, I do have motherfuckers all up in my shit sometimes. So I like to just confirm the people that say that they're fans or customers and shit like that. They are who they are. So if you don't mind, I'm actually going to even, since you say you're a subscriber, I'm going to look in the database and just make sure that you have subscribed. Because <laughs> I want to, I like to verify shit. I, I have, I have reason to doubt a lot of people. But you, uh, thank you, brother. You, you have a great email. Thank you for taking the time to write me. I do, I actually prefer these long format type of emails because it tells me that the people took the time to actually watch, read, and listen what I have to say. You wouldn't know all that shit unless you probably watched hours and hours and hours or whatever of my content and read read pages of blogs and this and that and watch the news. So, you know, motherfucker, I, I want to say that he's actually a fan or whatever. So thank you for the love. Thanks for the subscription. And if you guys want to help and support me like that, you know, whatever, I'll be happy to engage in some back and forth banter and sharing of ideas uh, for whatever I do here. You know what I'm saying? This is just... You know what I'm saying? The same camera I'm using to shoot this blog or video with is the same one I film my movies with, okay? So it's, I'm the same motherfucker, basically. It's like this is an opportunity for you basically to talk to the, the actor dude, producer dude, and the movie, and possibly even determine how the next ones maybe might come out if the suggestions are good enough or whatever. So um, some of the stuff I could bring up in the email here, let's think here. He's... I don't understand. He says you're a Canadian guy, mid-40s. You're basically my age. But you've lived in Scotland for the last 20 years. So I'm guessing you spent 20 years in Canada and 20 years in Scotland. Which one, which place do you live in now and which one do you prefer is my question I might have or whatever. Yeah. More importantly, why are you interested in Native American Indian girls? Yeah. Well, I guess if you grew up in Canada, you pretty, pretty much grow up around either white or native women. Pretty much. He also said he's 
lived in the UK, I think. So lived in the UK. Are there, okay, are there Native American... Maybe he was born in the UK. Maybe he was born in the UK. I don't know where the guy's born at. But it's interesting, like, I'm going to assume there's no Native American people, in large numbers at least, in the UK or Scotland. Prove me wrong. I don't know. Tell me what's going on. I don't know. So maybe you see them as different, special, exotic, because they're just rare where you are. Where I happen to be here, they're definitely not rare. They're, they're so common, they literally come knock on the door all the time. Literally. So they're everywhere here. Yeah. So, okay. You like the website. I don't know whether you... Are you here because of the website or you just like the way that I independently produce it? Because nobody else is like over me doing the site, just so that you guys know. I'm the whole creative engine guy. I determine what goes in, out, final cut, everything. So there's no body doing this and I'm the one behind it all it's all me the motivation is me so there's no other no one's forcing me to do this shit it's voluntary right so yeah there's a couple things let's think here uh let's see Jesus the battery lights flashing again Jesus I can't talk for more than 20 minutes without the thing going down all right so let me take a pause break here I'm gonna read the video then get a get a fucking sense of what I'm gonna do here and then we'll finally wrap the video up and stitch the files together or whatever. Okay? Yeah. Change the battery pack. APTN National News first told you about videos featuring young Aboriginal women. The producer says he's doing everything by the book. But are these women aware of what they're doing? APTN's Megan Fiddler has more. Online porn of young Aboriginal women. Lewd photos and graphic video. They're from Winnipeg and Thunder Bay. But the producer says... It's all legal. In typical porn fashion, you get their IDs and you uh, do what they call a 2257 form. It's, it's a U.S. law, actually, where you just uh, have them sign the uh, model release, whatever. I swear, yada, 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 date of birth, stuff like that. I spoke to Robert Horton, who knows Daisy from Thunder Bay. He said she doesn't remember signing any consent forms. She was drunk and high on drugs. And anything she did in the videos is a complete blur to her. Lisa Michelle is a women's rights activist who says the women are probably dealing with many issues and are forced into selling their bodies to support their addictions. We know that they're under the influence of something or other, and that tells me that they didn't understand. They may have signed something, but they didn't understand what they were agreeing to. But the owner of the online site says he isn't forcing anyone to be in his videos. He searches popular websites like Craigslist, for available girls in the cities he visits. But the easiest way to find them is to hit the streets. Generally, they're just outside on the streets, like you say. You know, I've yeah, met some of them at Subway Sandwich or wherever uh, people hang out there on Sunday day, but for the most part, they're just there. And I'm like, hey, do you want to make a video? Or he gets other girls to recruit new ones for him. A lot, a lot of times I've asked the other girls to say, hey, do you know anyone who wants to do a video with me, yada, yada, yada. I'll pay you this much money. And they actually bring girls to me, you know, just, a lot of legwork for me. Michelle says people like Shimmy are just continuing the legacy of abuse against Aboriginal women. This is all about violence against women. It may not be the physical, but it is the emotional and the spiritual violence that they're being violated totally by. That needs to stop. Canadian police departments say that this is the future of the online porn industry. Independent producers grabbing their own cameras and finding their own talent. But Michelle poses the question, if they don't remember signing consent forms, is it still legal? Megan Fiddler, APTN National News, Winnipeg. Okay, new battery pack in. I'm going to finally wrap up this guy's long-winded email here. I appreciate you writing, man. Derek, thank you so much. I mean, this is like some of the... I like getting fan mail or whatever, just email from subscribers and members that uh, they got interesting shit to say. You know what I'm saying? Because most people, most people actually think that uh, porn, adult videos, is just for guys to jack off to. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's not always about that. You know, it depends. It depends on the type of movie you're watching. A lot of the shit I shoot is more documentary style, where like as this guy says, I just let the camera go. And a lot of a lot of amateur girls just have they got stories to tell. Okay, and I let them tell their stories. A lot of people, they just need somebody to listen to them when they live in a world where it feels like nobody's listening to them. So I got a big ears, which are usually covered up with the bandana. So I like to listen to people tell their stories because I might fucking learn something from it. The very minimum, I'll learn more about them and I can 
You know what I'm saying? I'm better off knowing how to approach them and what their interests are and all that other shit. You know, you can't you can't interact with people and not listen to them. It's a very bad habit to just be around people and not really listen to what they say. You know, they say a lot of people they're just like listening so they can reply back and reply back and you know, just take some time and stop thinking about replying back and actually just listen. You know, maybe they might not want you to fucking reply back. Maybe they just want to run their mouth in their ear. You know what I'm saying? You know, this is the art that I've learned. So, I'm a good listener. So, I don't really know what the actual point of the <laughs> C-mail is. It's very, you know, it's just showing me some love or whatever. But, I mean, it's, I don't think I really have any questions to answer from it. There's a few points that I'm going to pick out about it that caught my attention or whatever that I just find interesting, and that's what I'm going to talk about here, all right? So just scan in the paragraphs here, whatever, whatever. Um, if I've already brought something up, I won't bring it up twice. So I found it interesting that you bring up the uh, Black Lives Matter movement. Um, I'm not, like, involved with that, really. I mean, I actually have a parody video called Black Looters Matter, if you want to Google that or whatever on some of the other sites, X videos, whatever. But uh, I'm not really a part of that shit. Um, I'm, I'm not a rioter, not a looter, not a protester. I've never been to a protest or carried a sign or picket torch this, that, and the other. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 if I do, pro if I have some kind of like social problem or something I'm going to protest, I'll probably use like this platform or something where I'm more effective than just me marching with a fucking sign saying we, we shall overcome or some shit like that. You know, if you, you got to take advantage of the power of your platform. And my tool is media. My tool is the camera and a keyboard and a whatever and the internet and whatever, I, I can reach and influence, as they say, more people than I can by going outside and setting a fucking garbage can on fire. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, no, nah, I'm not, I don't really understand. Uh, don't, don't assume that all black people are in Black Lives Matter or whatever. <laughs> you think that's funny, huh? Guys, <laughs> it's, it's funny. <laughs> no, this is, yeah. I don't know. Hey, man, straight up. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know who's behind it. I don't know who they got a fucking leader. I don't know what their terms or whatever is. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know what they actually believe in. I haven't studied them that deeply. Um, you know what I'm saying? I don't believe uh, what I hear about them from one side or the other to be good, bad, or ugly. I don't really know. I'm very neutral on that shit. You know what I'm saying? I don't have the t-shirt. I don't have the bumper sticker. I don't have any Black Lives Matter paraphernalia, etc., etc. I really don't know. Again, I'm, I'm half black, half Ethiopian, and I live in Canada, and I sell Hawaiian poke bowls and porn sites and stuff like that. I'm a very weird, random individual, so yeah. You know what I'm saying? All right, so that, that caught my attention, Black Lives Matter. I mean, it's like, it's like you know, I'll <laughs> take it personal to do, but a lot of times white people like to bring up like Martin Luther King and shit like that every time they, you know, I'm like, no, I, no, stop doing that shit, for real. It's all good, though. Um, okay, what else am I reading here? First Nations, this, prostitution, that, yeah, yeah, I've already addressed those issues. Um... Okay, the thing about Al Capone I'm reading at the very bottom paragraph. Um, I got, how do you lump, how do you lump me and Al Capone in the same email? <laughs> That's what I want to know. That's, <laughs> Al Capone was an alcohol bootlegger during Prohibition. Okay, am I him? I don't know. But wow, I don't have, I don't have his massive wealth influence or whatever, whatever. I'm not a, I'm not a pop icon figure. There's no, I'm, I'm not in the crime museum in Las Vegas or whatever or nothing like that. And I don't even actually consider myself to be a criminal. Actually, I'm pretty much, for the most part, a very law-abiding citizen of wherever I happen to be living at. Just laws vary from place to place or whatever. People don't know that. A lot of people don't know that prostitution is legal in Canada and that marijuana is legal in Canada. And I'm about to light some up right now. Right now. Marijuana and prostitution are legal in Canada. What a country, huh? Just goes to show you not everybody thinks like the United States of America, right? And laws vary from place to place, so it's your duty to know what they are, et cetera, et cetera, and to take advantage of them and your freedoms, I should say, take advantage of your freedoms from place to place to place or whatever. You know what I'm saying? 
Now, in some countries, they say, had this been Singapore, that's the death penalty, what I just did right there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But this is fucking Canada, where weed is legal and prostitution is legal. So, look that up on the books, any of you guys that want to Google that shit. Okay? I don't want to hear nothing about prostitution, this, that, because it's legal here. Okay? You got a problem with that? You take it up with the crown, also known as the queen, or whatever, of England, or Britain, or whatever they call it, or whatever. I don't know. Not my problem. Yeah, go, go talk with that them can call the law all you want and tell them, hey, Shemmy Cash knows something about prostitution in Canada. And he also smokes marijuana. Sometimes with the prostitutes. <laughs> so anyway, what else is in this email here? Ah, uh, oh, Jesus. Come on. Scroll down. It's a long email, man. Disaster. Okay, PR insurance. I was laughing at that when I read it, as in public relations insurance. I don't think that I need that. I'm not like an, I'm not a public official. I'm not a district attorney or a lawyer like some of the other subscribers I have. So I'm not a politically exposed person. And I'm gonna keep making jabs at that for you guys that don't have any idea. But I mean, look at the old shows. But it's like, yeah, man. Um, I'm not worried about my reputation, my PR. Good look. I'm 42 years old. Okay. I'm basically 50% of my life is over. I'm halfway dead, whether I want, whether I like it or not, want to accept it or not. I'm probably not going to live past 84. So, being that my life is already more than halfway over, you know, statistically and mathematically and all that shit, do you? What do you really, really, really think that I worry about my reputation at this point? Come on, man. Seriously, you need to be enjoying your life or whatever. The remaining half that's left of it. I always wonder about people that are always, oh, I'm, this is especially true for girls, women, are, you know, oh, I'm too good for that. I'd never do that. I'm, I'm like, you're going to die anyway. You're just like a walking bag of water. It's going to one day fucking evaporate. Nobody, people have this notion that they're going to like be here forever and my family name and what about, and what are they going to think? I'm like, man, you're going to be a pile of fucking bones underground before you know it. You better try to go have some fun. Shit. <laughs> learn, it for, learn it from me if nobody else. You know, life is very precious. Your hours, days, minutes, etc. And how you spend it are precious. So whether you want to spend it working and slaving away for some motherfucker or in a country you don't want to be in and doing something you don't want to do, that's up to you. But I'm not going to do that and I'm most certainly not going to be worried about my reputation. And I'm most certainly not going to get reputation insurance, PR insurance. Fuck. Like, literally, like, hire a public relations firm, do donations to women's shelters and charities. Like, come on, for good karma? Look, man, if the crackers want you, they're coming for you anyway, in whatever country you're in. Guaranteed. I've been on, been on that shit, been there, done that. It don't matter. Don't matter how much charity you donate. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That shit ain't going to save you. Look at all the foundations and shit that you see a lot of people have said. Look at, okay, look at the, uh, look at the Epstein Foundation, for instance. How about that? Does that save him? <laughs> Maybe it did. Who knows? But I'm saying, I, I know what you're saying about goodwill and being a charitable person, this and that. But if people really want to sling you, look at Bill Cosby. What about him? What about all the cheer? What about all the college educations that he paid for? You probably don't know about that. What about all the people that he put on, or whatever, for Hollywood, this, that, and the other? What do you, where's the gratitude? Where's the reciprocation? What about, should his reputation be good? He, man had a statue at Walt Disney World, Universal Studios, and all that shit. Come on, and they tore it down. Why? Oh, allegations, this, that. He gonna be out of jail in September, then I think things are gonna be very different once Mr. Bill Cosby gets out of prison. I've been, I have that marked on my calendar to look out. You did that man wrong, and he's coming back for his bread. He's coming to kick ass, best believe. Best believe the Jell-O Pudding Pot Man will return, for real. So, your reputation in the world, you know what I'm saying? It's, uh, it's not, I'm not concerned with it. I'm not concerned with how many people dislike and thumbs down me, how many people talk shit, this, that, and the other. It's not, it's not interesting to me. I don't care who's protesting me. I don't, you know, people are always shutting down my website, shutting down my channels, shutting down my hosts. Why? Because they don't like me. And none of the PR that I do in the world is going to help that. Some people, they just hate you with a fucking passion. But they're just like, fuck them, fuck Jimmy, I'm going to shut them down. I'm not going to rest. Some people make it their job to shut me down and turn me off or whatever. Many people do. Many organizations who I have named before. And many people who will be continued to be named and exposed. But it's like, 
I don't really trip on that shit, bro, because I'm out there and people know how to find me. If this channel gets shut down, I can start another one up right again the next day or whatever. And whoever is my true followers, whatever, they'll seek me out and find me. They'll be like, hey, what happened to dude? Oh, I heard he's over on this underground shit now. Okay, well, we got to go over there. If people dig you, they'll follow your shit wherever you go. So I don't really trip on that. And I definitely don't trip on all that good karma shit or whatever because it's fickle. You know what I'm saying? Those people will flip on you in a heartbeat, for real. Especially if they don't look like you. Mm -hmm. So it really ain't nothing I could do about that, bro. But anyway, thank you for your time and thank you for you all for listening. This was a very long email. You guys want to write me some long-ass emails like this, too. I'll sometimes get back to them, but it may take a month, a year. I don't really know, but I will take the time to get back to all you guys. If you want a faster response, you're going to have to do something else for me, though. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to probably put an Amazon wish list up or something, or you could, like, buy my movies. Do something to get my attention, in other words. You know, buy a bunch of my clips or something, and then email me and be like, hey, it's me. Hit me up. I'm a customer, blah, 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 blah. I saw your video. I'll be happy to shoot the shit with you. Whatever. So, yeah, do that. Okay? Thank you for your email. Thank you for your time. This is The Shimmy Show, and I'm out of here. Thoughts are just you. I'm burning myself down because it's so true. I'm hurting myself now. That's all that I do. I'm hating my days. I can't find the way. To the days filled with light Where I'd feel alright So much pain So much fight No I say to feel at night But as I stand and stay strong Always act like nothing's wrong Blah blah peace out what the hell? It's so fucking weird.